I know you will go read source material to find out, is it really this dumb? <laughs> I mean, yes, I do that too. <laughs> Sometimes I need, why do you think I'm called the czar of source material? I have to read it. Does he it suck this much in the source or is it just a bad adaptation? Turns out know. a lot For of science. the guy are just, just trash. They're just bad. I should have put Isekai's smartphone in here. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Truly S tier anime right there. Now that would put be him down. Put him down now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Anime Club After Dark, the podcast that delves into all things anime, manga, and otaku culture related. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai. And joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, John. So there's a song going through my head right now. Is it the OP for uh, Mashal Season 2? No, no. It was, it, I don't know if anyone else remembers this song, but it's Call On Me by Eric Prids. Prids? Yeah. Oh, song. Eric Prids. Uh, no, wait, no, 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 no. Call oh. on me. me. Call yeah, I know what you're talking about. Me. Yeah, that, this is like I don't know why that just started playing in my head. It just did. I don't know that one. Name name the song that, or the yeah name the sample the or the, the blah, blah, blah. name the song that was used to sample that song. I have I I don't <laughs> the song Valerie. It's a really good song. You should li listen to it. All I know is I remember watching the music video because it had like it was like an '80s aesthetic to it. Like everyone was in those '80s mm -hmm. like leotards. Yes. And then there was a lot of pelvic thrusting involved in the music video for some reason. <laughs> I mean, are you complaining? Oh. My What's cat your daughter doing now? Oh, stuff. your cat, your cat is trying to make a cameo appearance. She always she, she loves being loud whenever I have to do something and record. <laughs> and whenever I'm done recording, she will just be silent. Just like not bother <laughs> me at all. Just it's innocent little knows. baby. It's her cat instincts coming into play <sighs> orange cat she, behavior <laughs> she is half orange cat so. yeah, there you go see it, it makes sense it makes sense uh we also have our isekai connoisseur chinoda hello hello <laughs> it's better than what you had there originally <laughs> uh, yeah 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 but anyway uh speaking of isekai that is what we're here to do tonight uh so all four of us on the podcast even though natai couldn't be here uh we have gotten together a list of our top five or in natai's case top three of isekai uh, our own personal list and we're going to rank them in reference to each other tonight as we have done in our uh previous rankings so Besides myself, I'm the only one who knows what everyone has uh, chosen. I will say but in I hold, have... on, I, hold on, hold on. I will say in comparison to our other rankings that we've done, there is a significantly larger amount of overlap this time. So I made this comment when I was looking through, I was on Mal and I was like, all right, look at everything Isekai tag. And I'm like, wow, there are quite literally only a handful of good isekai. <laughs> <It> really <laughs> like is. in the 380 plus tags, I was like, there is maybe 10 that I would say are good. And then there's 370 that are just awful. Bad and awful. It's almost like and, a bunch of bad ones come out every season that Shinoda has to watch. <laughs> and it's unfortunate because it's like and well, it's like it's supposed to be isekai trash, you know. That like that's that's the meme, right? It's isekai trash, but it's like, oh, it's not just the meme; it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which eventually we will have something uh, in regards to that on our merch store, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this up, uh, and here we go. Brace yourselves for this shit fest. Um, I made a prediction. So you said there was five crossovers, and at least we shared one. And I was like, okay, I know the one. I know yeah. it's Mushoku Tensei. Yeah, right? that's yeah. And, and that, is, that is the I one was thing like, all four of us have on our list. I guarantee that Konosuba and ReZero are going to be crossovers for you guys. Wrong. Oh, ReZero was only on one person's list. Wow. Wow. And it was, was it Natai? Natai? I knew it! <laughs> I'd also Dude. like to point out, Natai only had three things on his list. He had Mishoku Tensei, Konosuba, and ReZero, and then he had a little addendum underneath that said all the rest is shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. So really, it's only his top three instead of his top five that we're rating. But, um, so, I, I had an honorable mention. Okay, this. go, I, go I, with the honorable mention first. So, 
I had more than five. I was like, could we at least do seven? Because there's seven that I actually do want to rank. But I was like, since we're only doing five, fine, whatever. But uh, my honorable mention was uh, Zero No Tsukaima, uh, the familiar of Zero. Mm-hmm. Now, this was the very first um, isekai. Technically, yeah, it was the very first isekai anime I've ever watched. Okay. And it's also one of the earlier, like, animes I watched. Like, I believe I, before I watched Zero No Sakaima, I watched, like, Rizzle Mine and Shakugan no Shana. And this is where I fell in love with uh, Rie Kukumiya as a voice actress. <laughs> <laughs> but the Cinderay the, Queen. The reason why, like, Zero No Sakaima was, like, my first isekai anime and also one of my earlier animes. But I also really loved the opening song. Uh, mm-hmm. I Say Yes by Ichigo is such a banger freaking song. I listened to that song. It was the first anime OP I ever downloaded. So I was like, you know, shout out to this anime that spawned for me is one of like the origins of like anime at all. Like anime other club after dark does not support me. anime music piracy. <laughs> no, no, of course not. No, I definitely didn't do any of that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Did you have any other um, uh, honorable mentions besides that one? I was going to say Inuyasha. What? I was going to say Inuyasha. Well, so... it's a funny thing you mentioned that because I put it on my list. <laughs> Thank hey. God, someone. Because I, I wasn't sure if you guys would put it on there. Because I'm like, yeah, that's technically an isekai. Because you know, she goes into a well and goes to a different. Well, ten, I mean, she goes to a different time period, right? But it's yeah. like it's a different world anyway. I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. I mean, but, and there's there's kind of magic. So, but the thing about Inuyasha was like, I you know, if you want to get real technical about it, like I watched Inuyasha, and that was my first like isekai, technically speaking. But I didn't know Inuyasha was anime until afterwards. Okay. Well, I have it on the list, but it's probably going to be the last thing we do since I, I I saved all the ones that only appeared once on everyone's list for the end. Um, right. So since we have Mashoko Tensei on all four of our lists, let's do that one first. All right, S tier anime. Um, uh, okay, no. moving on. <laughs> <laughs> I, what, what does it need to be, to be about, talked about? Like, everyone calls Mashoko Tensei peak anime. Every season it comes out, like every core that comes out or whatever, every release, it's like peak anime is back. And it's like, it's true. It's really good. Uh, I've I've really been enjoying the anime, the music, the art, the animation. Like I remember when uh, is it Studio Bind, right? Yeah, that Studio the... Bind is yeah. the one that's yeah. It's like it's White Fox and uh, Egg Firm, I believe, right? Yeah, the it's combination of both the... that are working on it. But it's like the animators from White Fox, and it's the per whoever else from Egg Firm. I don't know what production leads they are there, but. Uh, I I was concerned because I was like, ooh, White Fox, like, they're not that known for great animation. And it's not like there's a lot of action scenes in Mushoku Tensei, but there's, you know, there's a couple of action scenes. But they've all been animated really well. Yeah. Uh, Sugita is killing it as Rudy. I love listening to his voice as older Rudy. I just love Sugita. Uh, the voice <laughs> acting is on point. Uh, Sophie Best Girl. And y'all don't even know why Sophie is Best Girl yet. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm slowly getting on that train, though. It's going to take another, like, season and a half for me to be able to finally talk about why Sylvie has always been best girl. <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. What are you doing? What are you so, I love, on how, top of I love all how your that. cat is just derailing all of our recordings now. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's part, it's part of the podcast in. now. She's part of the podcast. Anyway, um, so uh, I can – I say on top of all that, I especially love the character arcs uh, in uh, Mashoko Tensei seeing the growth Rudy has uh, gone through as well as um, all the other side characters as well, seeing them evolve and change over time for the better or worse. Uh, it's It's been really cool and fun to watch. And like the attention to detail, the amount of care and love that goes to this anime, it, it's beyond wonderful. I agree. I, I just... I watching Rudy as a character is fun to me. Like I love watching this redemption arc for him. Like you start at, you, when you start the show, he's this absolutely shitty human being who has no like, kind of like no societal value. He dies. And then it's like, now he has a second chance. Yeah. Yeah. He was the type of weeb we used to make fun of. <laughs> yeah. And the, the difference in Mashoku Tensei versus a lot of other isekai, which has that kind of a setup is it's actually a struggle for him to be a better person. He doesn't have, like, he's not starting out as like the, the OP God character. He doesn't have, you know, immediately a bunch of people just around him that he can rely on. He actually has to learn how to be a good person in this new world. And that's what I like watching. 
Yeah, yeah and, and then you know when the story sets him up and it's like he's taking two steps forward but he takes three steps back yeah. and it's just like you know it's so easy for him to fall back into his old ways but he still takes those steps forward which is like it's an admirable thing to, to watch because it's like at every given moment that he thinks he's on top then he gets knocked down but then he, he keeps going forward it's really good yeah. which as fun as it is to watch like the, the uh, opmc trope and them always succeed and be like oh, yeah uh it's it's also fun watching a character that is fallible and does fall back on his old ways learn how to like become better he makes yeah. mistakes and he uh, keeps on trying and he keeps on moving forward. He's human. And honestly, that's makes what, it more what else could be better. Makes it more relatable because like if realistically, if you were put in that situation, as good as you might be, you'd probably fail occasionally. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, life is a bunch of experiences of failure and learning from your mistakes. And exactly. Which is kind of the theme of Mishogu Tensei. Yeah. It quite learning literally is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he it's it's because it doesn't yada yada over the like because, you know, there's a lot of isekai where it starts off with, well, I'm going to lead a different life. And then like it just works out for them. Yeah. And in Rudy's case, it's like some things work out, some things don't. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. And some of it is through trial and error. Yeah. I don't know. I, I love Mishoka Tensei. It's like it's what a like a super serious dramatic isekai should be, in my opinion. On the yeah. other hand, you have Konosuba. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, it's funny. I originally was going to put Konosuba in my top five. What's but top? I was like, can I really call it a top five uh, isekai? Because I have only seen the first season. What? Okay. No, that's a fair, that, that's a fair assessment. If you've only seen the first season, you can't, you can't judge it by what is all out. So Yeah, like I, I didn't care to go watch the second season. I didn't care to go watch the um, spinoff. So I'm just like, you know, can I really say this? I like, I liked season one quite a lot. I think it's hilarious, but I just never cared to watch the rest. So can doesn't, I really doesn't... call it a top? I like I I agree that Konosuba is good, but I can't call it my personal top five. That's it's a fair. great it's a great parody of isekai as a genre. Oh, it absolutely is, but it, it takes more than that. It it has fun in its setting and with its characters, and that's what I genuinely love the most. And it doesn't shy away from that fact either, which is even yeah. better. How overzealous how overly hilarious just everything about it how i dumb. genuinely love and how <laughs> right. dumb some things are which make oh my god the dumb moments make me some people some like people mad. might say there are certain characters in like the 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 four main characters that are dumber than others i'd argue they're all equally dumb just in different ways oh absolutely uh so compared to something like Mishoku Tensei, where are we putting Konosuba? It's again like the opposite I, for me, end, but it's so good because I, of that. I personally would put it at an A just because like it's not that good. You guys are just hyping it up too much. But <laughs> I, I can see why people be like, no, it's S tier. You're like, okay. So you know, if we had an A plus tier, I, that's where I would probably land it for me personally. I put okay. it at S tier for the comedy. I, I genuinely you know love it. I, I'm kind of with John on this. As much as I love Konosuba. I don't think it's like to the level of Mashoku Tensei. It's a very different show. It's very, very different. Uh, but I think as a parody of Isekai as a as a genre, it's great. I, so I would say fun. eight. I, I say eight tier. But I, I'm also with John, like an A plus, so like a high A tier. Yeah, it's like S minus or A plus. Like it's yeah. it's up there, but not truly peak of peak. It wasn't on all four of our lists. <laughs> no, but John, do you maybe know if was John on... watched all of it, <laughs> I know. But John, I will say this. this. Let let me put it like oh. this for Konosuba. It's okay. literally the only game that's gotten me to play. It's the only anime that's gotten me to actually play its gotcha game. There's literally no other thing that has gotten me that invested. That that is not the flex you think it is, Chinoda. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flex for me. Okay. I think that's for me, buddy. And I mean, I don't know how that relates to how good of an anime it is. <laughs> like, uh, so let me put it just like because this. you really like the um the storyline and all that stuff doesn't mean like you would go all like I, I understand it makes you a, a giant fan of the series, right? Yeah. I understand that 
you know, for a lot of people, like I, I believe Jacob really loves Konosuba as well. And yep, he like orders he all, all the freaking manga and stuff. Or not the oh, manga. He, the, the he, light he knows light the light. whole story now. Yeah, he's read everything. And it's just like, you know, Konosuba is not one of those type of things for me. But like, I think that it's a good uh, marker that if I watch your anime, I go and read your source material. I feel like that's a good indicator of like, this is a probably really good series. It's at least intriguing enough for me to go to the source material. But to, uh, but uh, you know, like to interact with its alternative media like video games and other franchises and stuff like that and yeah. like yeah i feel like it's more of a personal preference thing because i like when overlord released mass for the dead i went to go play it because i'm like oh my god overlord has a, a freaking gacha game but then i was like wow this game sucks i don't love overlord <laughs> that much like no i love overlord like i wish i could turn my camera and show you. like i have all my books they're in the shelf right over there all lined up and here's the art book from the anime i have all the fucking source material right there just sitting right there so it's like you, mean you don't have the things you love within arm's reach all the time, John. No, I keep it far away from the cat so she doesn't destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Fair. Yeah. Um, so like as much as I love Overlord, like it's my favorite, you know, top number one. I don't think the mobile game was that John, good. Though, John. I, no, and that's you, fair. So from my perspective, while I do fully agree it is per- completely personal, I'm just saying from my personal uh opinion, like the fact that it got it made me fall in love with uh, the story is whatever. It's the characters that I fell in love with, the characters and the comedy. Um, the fact that it made me fall in love with it so hard that I want to interact in different forms of media with it. And there's been nothing else that have made, well, other than Halo and Star Wars, we're talking specifically anime, um, that have made me want to interact with different forms of media. Yeah. Like I, this I is the like, only one, you, and then, uh, that's why I love it so much. Hallmarks for you, like it makes sense, yeah. Yeah, I will. That's say, why John, it's personally S tier for me. I, I will say, John, you say that about wanting to read the source material being a mark of quality. I know you will go read source material to find out is it really this dumb. <laughs> I mean, yes, I do that too. <laughs> Sometimes I need. Why do you think I'm called the czar of source material? I have to read it. Does he it suck this much in the source, or is it just a bad adaptation? Turns out to know a lot of science. isekai are just just trash. They're just bad. I should have put isekai smartphone in here. Honestly, <laughs> 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 truly S tier anime right there. Now that would put be him down. Troll. Put him down now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an epic troll. I, I would I would salute you for that. No, I, I didn't. I wasn't gonna put it up here. I hate that. And you know what's the worst? I'm gonna watch season three when it comes out. I'm not gonna stop watching it. God. <laughs> I know. I'm hate watching uh, it at this point, and I hate I myself. It's not even hate. I don't, I don't even, you know, I wish I could feel something from this show. I don't feel anything, and yet it's I still watch mid fest. <laughs> it, no, bro, that's an insult to mid. Mid does not mean bad, Alex. You have to stop calling bad stuff mid. That's not what mid means. Mid means middle. No, that mid means, means bad. bad. No, 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 no that's not what no, mid Chinoda, means. You don't. You're not understanding. Something is bad, that can be good, because bad is funny, you know, funny bad. Like the room. The room. Bad. Funny bad. That's why it makes it good. Mid means it's so middle of the pack that it's so boring, it's so it's forgettable. Forgettable. Being mid is worse than being bad, in my opinion. Because if you're a mid show, I will not remember you. I don't I remember hate. the plot. I, I don't remember the character names of the people in Isekai's smartphone. All I remember is he has a smartphone. <laughs> and like he has a harem of girls it's like nine girls or it's like in the have, title like, though or something it's just oh, in the god. title oh god i actually remember more about it than oh no that's not good see see you I like it so much i hate see? it so much john i actually remember stuff john john is right though like five out of ten is the worst score you can give something <laughs> Yeah, like it, if it's not a bad experience and it's a middling experience, it's even worse because it's easier to forget middling experiences than bad experiences. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so next on the list, um, speaking of peak, Eminence uh, and Shadow. <laughs> uh, I I swapped mm. Konosuba for this one because I was like, you know what? I really like Eminence and Shadow. It's really funny. I love it. I and, love it because so in terms much. of like an isekai that makes it's a self aware isekai. I was like, you know, I again, I think Konosuba is good, but I like Eminence and Shadow better. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is good. It's an actual but I like parody this. parody. 
like is as far as parodies go, I found myself more enjoying that and the fact that you know I went and go read the resource material. I was like, yeah, I gotta go do <laughs> <Yeah>. it now. <laughs> Versus Konosuba, where I I watched one season. It's like, yeah, I watched one. I watched Isekai Quartet. Does that count? I mean, kind <laughs> of spinoff of sorts. I mean, I watched it because Overlord was in it, uh, <laughs> and then I wanted to stop watching it because Shield Hero came into it. So. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> By the way, John, uh, you know who just started reading the source material for Eminence and Shadow? You? This guy! Hey. Hey. It's, a mark. it's a hallmark of good quality show. If you go and read it, it it's one of, definitely one of the things that... Because you know the, the point of anime, at least back in the day, was to sell the source material, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's not really that case anymore. Now the anime is kind of just exist as alternative media that also can help sell you the source material. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's a win-win. There's yeah. a lot more anime watchers than there are light novel readers, I would say. Absolutely. No. Oh, yeah. 100%. And I think it's a good way to get people into source material is, like, with the anime. Oh, it absolutely yeah. is. I do I do wish that, this is way off topic, but I do wish that studios would take a little more risk with anime original stuff from time to time, but... No, there's, yeah. a, there's a monetary reason they don't. And it unfortunately makes sense. I'm just saying Metallic Rouge is great. Oh, it is. Fantastic. Are you caught up? Did you watch the last episode? I'm one episode behind. <laughs> but I will watch the newest behind. episode this weekend. Anyways, Eminence and Shadow. Fantastic all around. S -tier. Great parody. <laughs> yeah, I think S -tier, S -tier, to me it's S -tier. has to go. Like, as far as parody at Isekai goes, to me this is probably S tier. All right, I agree. It's it's fantastic. I cannot wait. And as of the, the end of, of the spoilers here, skip like thirty seconds. As of the ending of latest season, it is now a reverse isekai as well. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing where that goes. Did the anime show them going back? Mm -hmm. Yep. I that's the last did episode. That that's the last episode. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> this next part is kind of boring, though, in my opinion. Like oh, okay. comparative hey. to the rest of the the season all i need but, is my shadow service man but like i said the uh anime has been hyping up the show a lot better than like the manga did so i'm pretty excited to watch the anime like it, it's very far and few between that an anime will outdo its source material yes and you've said before like that's the mark of like genuine adaptation quality is when uh an anime when adaptation you can elevate, in particular, yeah, either when elevates you can elevate or the source material. Yeah, if you can either, like, like a right good adaptation there. will be a one for one remake, right? Because if the source material is good, then uh, it. But that's the problem. If it's good, then a one for one is fine, but it could be better. <laughs> yeah, if they make like, the changes that make. I know it that better. people argue with Stanley Kubrick's style of like directing. I love Kubrick. I, I love his films, and I loved what he did to um, you know uh. Space Odyssey. 2001, like, yeah. Um, Clockwork Orange. I didn't read that book, so I have oh. no idea how it compares. Okay. The book the book is something else, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard that it's like, I've heard people say they hated the movie because the book is like, oh, it's way darker, this and that. But I'm like, oh, so really? I, I, have to I have to read the book first so I can comp compare and contrast. But for example, for um, The Shining, like I love the movie. The book, it's okay. Like, I think Kubrick delivered way better in the movie than he did the uh, actual, like, the book. So that's how I feel. Because it's a Stephen, Stephen King book. Yeah, like, but that's also because I don't like Stephen King that much. Do you know what's funny is, like, that movie when it came out was, The, the Shining, was, like, really well received by both critics and audiences. And St uh, Stephen King famously hated it, so he went yeah, on to make like own, a, yeah. a made for TV. I can't remember if it was a miniseries or a movie, but uh, everyone hated it except for yeah, him. He, he made his because he wanted it to be more in line with the book. And as it turns out, that was shitty. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> turns out that sometimes a director knows better than the uh, author. Sometimes turns so out far. Stephen King that sometimes cocaine can't write movies. Well, <laughs> this was the same case for like um. Have you guys ever read or watched Fifty Shades of Grey? No. <laughs> I have not read the book, but I have uh, unfortunately seen the film. Oh, so, no. Poor Alex. I watched a uh, video essay about the entire movie series and stuff. And as it turns out, there are parts in the movie series that are actually not terrible. Really? Those parts, yeah. And those parts, those specific scenes 
are things that aren't based on the book and it was the director's like decision the writers this like the screenwriters decisions to change because uh was it stephanie meyer she's the author i believe of 50 shades of gray no 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 that's uh, that's, no. that's stephanie uh, meyer is twilight yell, yell twilight James? yeah uh, I, all right. So whoever would created uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, it's based off of uh, Twilight, by the way. <laughs> if yeah, you didn't it's Twilight know that, fan fiction. It's, it's, it literally, it's literally Twilight fan fiction, <laughs> which is crazy. And it became its own movie series. But uh, she, the, the, I believe it was a woman. I have again, I, I don't remember. But the creator of Fifty Shades of Grey had so much creative control over the movies, and we're like, no, you have to keep this. You have to keep this, and fought against the director on basically every decision. So. The parts in the movies that are actually like passable as a movie are from the actual director and their screenwriters. The parts yeah. that are terrible are based on the book. Yeah, the the writer wow. of the uh, Fifty Shades of Grey novels is E. L. James or Erica Mitchell, as her real okay. name is. So yeah, uh, I watched a video essay about that, and I was like, that makes so much sense. Because <laughs> uh, I was like, you know, there are some moments in the movies that I was like, it's not terrible. It's like standard movie. But then there's parts that are just god awful, and it, as it turns out, it's because it's based on the source material. <laughs> that nice. This is like that's Funny. a shame. That is a true fucking shame. <laughs> Anyways, back to anyway, the list. Back, back to back to what we're actually here to do. Uh, so yeah, so Eminence of Shadow definitely S tier. Uh, yeah. Delta Best Girl. Um, moving on. Uh, to another one that had overlap here. Uh, no game to life. Uh, both myself and John had this on our list. So. I originally wasn't thinking, I think I didn't think of No Game No Life as an isekai. Like, I never have thought about it as an isekai. Mm. Even though it literally is. <laughs> Even though it literally is. Yeah. I, you know why? It's because we haven't gotten a season two. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fallen so far from grace. Like, do people even know what No Game No Life is? Oh, Sadly, yeah. The memes are still there. Sadly, it's though. Not it's not nearly as prevalent, but yes, it's still there. It, season two never, man. Season two never. But in terms of like, enjoyable isekai like I, I forget that it's an isekai but it is fucking hilarious of a show uh i probably should go read the books um the movie you know was what's like... sad you know the saddest thing about no game no life is if it came out today it'd probably get like eight seasons maybe maybe i don't know I, about I, that i, I honestly it's not a movie. don't i mean the thing about no game no life is like it's made by madhouse uh they're not known to doing sequels but when they make sequels, they're usually god awful, <laughs> like <laughs> Overlord, <laughs> <laughs> like Overlord, which we'll get to in a moment. But I personally really like uh, No Game No Life. I think the the anime itself, like it's beautifully animated. I love the color palettes. I love oh the my music. God, the color palettes. Uh, the movie was fucking phenomenal. Like it's one of the one of the better anime movies I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And like the story itself is pretty well written. Like there are a lot of throwaway jokes in there that I know people have problems with, like the whole like. Uh, the the incestuous stuff about it right hmm. it's like eh, it's kind of there but at the same time it's like well it's not really because it's not it's, it's not real dude it's not it's fake <laughs> first of all they're not related okay one of them's adopted unfortunate second of all uh <laughs> unfortunate get out of here alex <laughs> but like that's not the main focus of the series like it has those type of undertones for sure just like the monogatari series has those type of undertones for sure but the main story itself doesn't revolve around that at all no like Stephanie Dola and uh, Jibril are like, you know, you know, the best girls in the series are the actual like love interests, if we could call it that. Like the sister is not a love interest. For now. <laughs> For, now. <laughs> For now. Much of Alex's chagrin. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I thought it was, I mean, obviously I, I loved it over the years, but now years later, as I've seen so much other things and have grown more i think it's okay um, i don't know if it's that amazing anymore Pro i think the production quality is uh above the standard but i don't know if it's necessarily that amazing now that i think about go it read the books yeah i'll <laughs> we'll never get a season two just go read. i know can I, I'll can, have I just, to. can i can i say though like because we're i at least i am kind of thinking about this in terms of the anime specifically not necessarily the source material um if i'm ranking no game no life just based on what we've got with the anime so far i'd probably sadly as much as i love it probably give it b tier compared to everything else you know what's really funny i, agree. I also agree <laughs> we all agree okay now I love if no if game i life. were 
if if I were ranking it based on the anime and all the source material, then I'd probably say A. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I we're just does judging anime over here. I feel like the same, the same. I, that's exactly how I feel about it. Like okay. it would be a if we considered the movie and also the the books, but if we have to judge just on season one. It's like yeah, it's more of a C, like or a B. It's more of a um entry level like anime. Well, no, I, I I'm judging it based on the one season we got plus the movie. If I had to judge it just on the one season of TV anime we got, I'd give it a C. Yeah, but with the movie, the movie really elevates that first season. Yeah, God, it I wish really they made... does. That like set a new standard for the movies for Madhouse. I'm like, come on, yeah. please, Madhouse, please, please, please. Madhouse, please. <laughs> All right, all right. Uh, so moving on. Speaking of Madhouse, uh, Overlord. Yeah, speaking of Madhouse, uh, uh, this season. Was both... This was on John and um, my uh, Chinota's my... Chinota's list. Yeah. So, uh, it's a... I'm surprised that. Oh wait, and Ty hated the anime. Yeah, um, and I lot... I didn't have it on my list because I love the light novels. I absolutely adore the light novels. The anime is just kind of eh? yeah. No, to me, like right out like again, Overlord, favorite light novel series at the moment. It depends on how the last two volumes pan out. We'll see if that. If you're changes. looking for an isekai light novel series to get into, pick Overlord or it's Mushoku Overlord. Tensei. Like you can't That's... go wrong with that, or Slime Tensei. That you can't go wrong with that either. Those are really good light novels. Uh, but for me. I personally like Overlord's anime is what got me into Overlord. Mm. So I'm biased. I'm biased as fuck. Okay. <laughs> uh I absolutely love the music in Overlord. The OST is fucking phenomenal. I love it. The anime I itself, C tier. Like I can't wow. I, I want Oh, to... C tier is way too low, no, buddy. Come no, on. Bro. Come it, on. It's C tier. I Have mean, you... I'm kind of in agreement Dude, here. You don't understand. All right. Season three was such season two and season three was such a drop in quality it's such a slog to get through too it's so terrible like you i can't base it off of season one and four four i think they improved i think it got better in four a little bit uh definitely a giant improvement in from season three season yeah. three was a fuck it, it was dog shit bro. season like, three oh. is absolute utter shit <laughs> yeah like i'm I, it's unfortunate that the season three exists and season two, I personally, season two was one of my favorite uh, arcs to be um, in, in the novel, but the adaptation was pretty fucking dog water. Is it bad that at this point I'm only watching new seasons of Overlord to support the creator of Overlord? Wow. <laughs> I'm only, I'm watching it because, again, I love the music. Um, listening to OXT and also... Um, Myth and Roid? Myth well, and Roid, it's yeah. not Myth and Roid anymore. <laughs> I well, no, right, they right. They're not there anymore. Yeah. Well, I believe they broke up? I don't know. Now. It was... um. I don't remember the, the the lady singer from Myth and Roid was the one who did season four, I believe. Maya Maya something. I don't. Know. I don't, I don't know the name off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up, but I'd also have to look it up. But yeah, no, to me, because because we have to rank it based off of the anime and off of the seasons one through four. Also, the new movies coming out in a couple months. By the way, just just I'm excited. It's the Holy Kingdom arc, <laughs> but it will be a letdown. Thing, but he's excited. <laughs> Well, see, the letdown was that in season four, they literally skipped chapter tw or volume 12 and 13 of the light novel and just adapted part of the fucking volume 14. And you're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that this doesn't make any sense. But I'm like, OK, whatever. It doesn't matter, I guess. They, they literally skipped that because they're going to make it a movie. And then mm -hmm. I'm just like, uh, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm a little iffy on that. But quality wise, season four wasn't as bad as three and two. And music, again, phenomenal. But to me. Because I have to judge it based of the entire anime series, it's the C tier. It's just because of those two bad seasons, it drags it down so bad, you know? Yeah, I agree. I as much as I want to give Overlord like a really good rating, I can't. <laughs> I really can't. Unfortunately, Bic you guys do have to compare it to the uh source. source material. So I can understand where you're coming from, and I hear the pain in John's voice every time he talks about this. Every single time. Because I love the series so much, you know? Like, I'm freaking... So, I'm, but... I'm Marlon Brando, you know? Look at how they massacred my boy. <laughs> when when season three was actually airing, like, almost every week when we get together to record, John was like, this is fucking bullshit, guys. This is absolute shit. I was there was so much copium, bro. Maybe they're holding out animation budget for the end because the ending is supposed to be so good. And it's like, oh god. 
the baby. What, what, what so we got with what we got with John going through season three of Overlord's anime is gonna be me if the new Spice of Wolf sucks. <laughs> oh god. Oh, really I, you were already huffing copium because I told you the CGI in it was horrendous from the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh, you just conveniently ignored the horrendous CGI. <laughs> Listen, uh, maybe they got the budget for other stuff. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So, the music's gonna be great. Speaking as someone who's anime only for Overlord at the moment, um, I pr I liked uh, most of it. I definitely agree on the fact that season two and three was much less in quality compared to one and four. Um, even for me, that was obvious. Um, skipping stuff and like some things not making sense and the animation budget for a lot of things. Holy shit. Music has always been banger. Um, yeah, but otherwise, literally, everything else. about Overlord's anime. Literally, in season four, there's Renner who does like a music scene, a dancing music scene. That's yeah, not in the novel. Scene. That's not in Look, any of bro, the that, bro, that was I anime. Don't give original. A shit. That was great. I loved that. I loved it. It caught me so off guard. I was like, the they fuck wasted, is happening? Like, three minutes doing that, bro. Like, why? <laughs> Look, I loved it. I thought it was pretty. Okay. We could have got a lot, but it doesn't Shinoda, matter. Yeah, Shinoda yeah, yeah, got yeah. the George Lucas syndrome going on here. That 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 three minute long musical in Return of the Jedi was really necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. Um. Anyway, and I know Natai's thoughts about it, and that's why he even left it off of his list. Because I mean, Natai would put it here. Natai would. Natai, put it no, in Natai would put it in F. <laughs> well, we don't Damn. have an F. So. We don't have an F, but he would put it in F, which is why I think it's a solid C for all of us involved. If yeah. you're. If you're gonna give it like a B at least, me and Alex are saying C and Natai is would say D. I, I feel I like think it's a it solid belongs C. in C. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so now we're getting to the stuff that only appeared on everyone's list once. Um, and the first so, one is Saga of Tanya the Evil, and it was on I, list. <laughs> Let's go, original, Evil Lollies. <laughs> my original top five actually did have uh Tanya and also Konosuba and also Slime Tensei. <laughs> And then I was like, you know How what? How many times did you revise this list? A lot. Like five. <laughs> you understand this, man. Because, again, if you look through the top, like, you know, you go to Mal, you go number one, most members of people who like this yeah. show. Yeah. It's like, these were all in the top 50. Like, top 20, I would mm -hmm. say. And, I'm, and then that made me reevaluate. I'm like, okay, first of all, there's over 380 Isekai tagged anime. And... It made me reevaluate what is actually good isekai. And to me, I'm like, okay, I liked Tanya Saga the uh Saga of Tanya the Evil. The music was again on point. Animation, fucking phenomenal. Was it Madhouse? Best, no, best studio name no. ever, Studio Nut. Oh, yeah, studio, studio Nut. Nut. Okay. Um great animation, you know. Uh the voice acting by um Aoyuki. Phenomenal. Oh my god, phenomenal. I love Aoyuki. A that woman has phenomenal actor. range. I honestly think voice. this might have been one of her best roles ever, in my personal opinion, at the at I least. mean, she, she has a very dynamic range. She was also an overlord, by the way. She's Clementine. Um she's also Mao Mao in um Oh shit, uh, she's yeah. Mao Mao. Right, yeah. right. Yes, yeah, this this sad. woman this woman Yuki has Aoi. more range than people will ever give her credit for. Yeah, she she's a phenomenal voice actor. Uh, she really carries the role of Tanya, freaking cycle. <laughs> She's a freaking cycle Nazi loli. Uh, but again, I didn't go and read the source material after watching the anime. I've been waiting for a season two. Um, it's coming I, I out. Did, allegedly. It is coming. It is coming. I, I again, I like the story, but it's to me, it's like as far as isekai goes, it's not that great of a easy guy in my opinion like it's not top five material to me it's probably top like 10 material but not top five mm. that's understandable it's, it's that's an enjoyable fair. story the art is good the music's fucking again myth and roy yeah <laughs> jingo jungo fucking love that song it's the fun actual watching OST her... itself pretty good it's let me fun watching tanya just be so comically evil <laughs> Yeah, are we the bad guys <laughs> are we the baddies no no we're following the rules therefore it's okay <laughs> Uh, well, let me that, ask this: you Have know, you guys like... watched the movie? No, yes. I haven't watched the movie. Oh, you haven't watched the movie, no. bro, bro. It was good. All right. it was pretty actually, good. It was actually. It was actually. Is it about the good. American girl? Is is that the main antagonist? Um. Yes. Okay. Because yes. I knew the story, the next part coming up ahead, because someone I was watching it with told me, like, "Hey, yeah, that that girl that pops up at the end of the the uh, show, the daughter, 
she's like the next bad guy and basically is the main antagonist. I'm like, that makes sense. And I'm like, wait, are we the bad guys? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, you actually see a lot of things from her perspective and like a lot of things start making sense. And it's actually really cool. Um, no, I it compared to the rest love... of these, though. <laughs> I genuinely love uh, Saga of Tanya the Evil. I enjoy that character so much. The story is okay, in my opinion. It's just a story about war country trying to expand and all that. Um, but the characters are what really sell it for me. The side squad, they're great. But Tanya, oh my god, Tanya yeah, is she's so much psychotic, fun. bro. Like in the anime, when she's like laughing maniacally and spinning around in circles, she's like, <laughs> it's like bro. Pirouetting bro. while laughing like a maniac. Oh what my god. I job. love her. I lo I fell in love when she did that. I'm she like, literally you're some crazy. Nukes. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I personally think Tanya's saga, the saga of Tanya the Evil, to me personally, would be a B tier. Uh, okay. Just because it's like, it's good. But it's not amazing because, like I said, you know, everything about it is a good story. But to me, it feels kind of middle of the road, kind of just like No Game, No Life, where it's like season one. Yeah, yeah it's pretty good. Personally, I would say it's A tier, but I'd say like a, a low A tier, A minus. I would go A tier for Saga of Tanya the Evil because, uh, again, very fun. It made me... Um... It just made me fall in love with it so much just because of how crazy, how insane some of the things they do is. And I'm just like, the balls on this little girl is so freaking hilarious. Um, and the music design and the, the like sound effects and stuff, amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Oh, sound amazing. design is phenomenal in that anime. Yeah, like the, the magic feels hefty when it's being used. It's like, yeah. And, <clears throat> it's like, oh, and the yeah, sounds cool. of it powering up. Oh my God. I, I, I actually beast, sat man. up when they started doing that. I was like, oh, they they put in love and care this, for this. The sound engineer was cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we think? A or B? I think A. A? I think A. I I'm think a... B. So it's up to you to defer, Alex. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think what Natai would say about it because I know he's seen Saga of Tony the Evil, but I don't Let think he liked him. it. I mean, he's probably I don't think not he's going to respond. He's, he's not awake, Natai. He's asleep right now, bro. <laughs> oh, you know what? Right. He is I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in B, but say it's a B. Plus. Okay. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. All right. Uh, so next on the list uh, is also from Chinoda's list. It is Slime Tensei, which almost right. made it onto my top five. So I wanted to put Slime Tensei in my top five because I it's a, one of I finished reading the web novel. I have not read the light novel. I'm not sure how much they've changed, but the anime is based on the light novel, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, my information is how much based of a the difference is there between the web novel and light novel? Web novels are like first anime. drafts. Yeah, like for example, Overlord's web novel. There's no Albedo; she doesn't exist. Oh, <gasps> yeah. So there's there's that to think about. Like the versions between web novel and light novel are they can be pretty major. Uh, in like Mushoku Tensei's case, I believe it's pretty minor going from web novel to light novel. But I, you know, I I don't know. Apparently, um, God, the... I can't think of the horror of living in a world where my Big titty virgin succubus <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> Makes me sad. I mean, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> She's just sitting right here on my desk. But anyways, you were saying I'm that's, sorry. that's a good uh, way to think of web novels, though. They're essentially first yeah, draft. Web novels are basically the first draft. So there could be quite like the major arcing story is probably not going to change, but there's definitely going to be a lot of changes. Okay. And it, as just an example of like how it could change from a web novel to light novel, Overlord. Um, apparently in Mushoku Tensei, again, the overarching story is the same, and they've been hitting some of the same, uh, basically all, most of the same notes, but there are things that were missing. And apparently what they did with, um, what's her name in season two, the, the elf girl that he liked, that liked her, liked him when he saved her from the party when he was adventuring, Rudy? Oh, that one. Uh, I don't. Uh, Sa Renette? Sally? I don't remember. It starts with an S. I just can't remember the name. Sasha, Sarah, Sarah. I think it's Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I, I don't remember. <laughs> apparently, uh, they changed her story quite a bit. So I was like, oh, I okay. didn't know that. But the, apparently, the light novel is way better than the web novel anyway, which is usually true. Like, Overlord's light novel is way better than the web novel. Uh, I don't know how much they've changed for Slime Tensei. 
because again, I've only read the web novel, but to me, it doesn't look like they've changed very much, at least based off of the first two seasons. Gotcha. Um, uh, I will say though, Slime Tensei really surprised me when it so came fun. out. Because well, when the first episode came out, I was like, oh hey, I I read the web I read the web novel. Um, I like this series. It's all right, it's okay story. And then I watched the first episode. I'm like, yo, what is this fucking sound design? What is <laughs> what is this magic system? Oh my god, it's so animated so well. What what the fuck? So I, I'm very surprised at how well the anime has uh, adapted the source material or the, the light novel. Like at, at least in terms of animation quality and sound quality, it's leagues above a lot of other adaptations like <laughs> like Overlord. <laughs> Is it? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Sara. S A R A. It was Sara. I was right. Yeah, from uh, Counter Arrow. Yes. Is it Eight Bit doing the adaptation of Slime Tensei? Yes, it is Eight Bit. Okay. Eight Bit was the um, X Madhouse employees. It is. I yeah, believe they're X Madhouse. I was pretty so, sure it was Eight Bit, but I wasn't sure. They're also doing the new season of uh, Yuru Camp. They also took over for. Um, Irregular at Magic High. I believe they did, yes. For that. Even though I think it was Madhouse who did the first season. <laughs> if I oh. had a dollar for every time they <laughs> took over a, a season of anime for Madhouse, I'd have two dollars. <laughs> Not a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> weird that it's happened twice, right? Probably but, gonna happen more times, honestly. Yeah, based off the animes alone, and plus the OVAs, uh, the first two seasons, plus the OVAs, I believe there was a movie, but I don't remember if yes. I watched the movie. There is a movie, yes. I don't remember if that was what I watched. I, I honestly do not remember, but uh, all of them Isn't have there the like same... two movies? I honestly don't remember. I'm pretty but sure I'm basing it one. off of the the quality across the OVAs and like the movies and the animes. I, I feel like this is a very solid A-tier anime. Uh, mm. It's got a decent story. I love the voice acting. Uh, the animation and sound design, like I said, are phenomenal. Like, they blow a lot of the other easy guy out of the fucking water, which is unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite unfortunate because <laughs> the story itself is kind of, it's it's okay, in my opinion. I don't think it's a bad story. I just think it's okay. Like, it, I, it does have a couple say, of... I just want to say, Mila makes me feel some kind of way. Oh, my God. Oh, She's just... a thousand-year-old dragon princess. It's fine. Throwing that out there, man. It's oh, just... Scarlet Bond. Also, Ranga is like a bro. I love freaking Ranga. I love his voice actor. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, so I, I I genuinely love Slime Tensei. It's it, it's a, such a fun anime to watch between the characters, the world, the story that keeps on happening. You slow. You get a drip feed of the story as more and more things happen. You find out more of history. I find that really cool and really interesting, actually. So yeah. it's it's a really cool thing. I love the character designs as well, and especially the fact that they're not they're not afraid to change up character designs, what clothes they wear, how they look. I really find that cool because there's a lot of figures and a lot of art that comes out of uh, this series because of that. Yeah, uh, we I, I think both of you guys said it already, and I'll I'll echo it. Like this series is not super deep. It's not super like probing, but it's fucking fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. Solid A. I, I agree. I, I would say it's just short of S tier. If, if I mean, if it was like if the writing, of... if the story and the writing was a little bit better, I'd probably put it up there. Like, I'm so sorry yeah. if you, Sama, but it's your, your writing is not that great. <laughs> if there were any kind of deep themes or actually I think it's like pretty good, I, I think it's just a little bit below S tier is the only thing. I think it's pretty good. Oh yeah, no, again, yeah. It, it it the writing was a little bit better and the story yeah. was a little bit better, it would definitely be S tier. That's the only thing holding it back. It's the writing. And you know, as an anime only at the moment, for me, maybe it gets better with the upcoming season. So I'm very excited to see what happens. Yeah, There's a lot of things. Rest of the season. I, I do not go into any of these seasons expecting deep writing. I just expect fun. No, and that's <laughs> fair. But, like, the <laughs> yeah. thing is, the, uh, the story and everything has been moving along. And it's been building more and more. So I'm really excited to see what kind of shenanigans happen. All right. Uh, moving on. So this next one is the only one on anybody's list that I have not seen. And it is, uh, what is it? Um, Isekai, Isekai Oji-san. Oji 
um uncle in another world or whatever it is in english only excuse one I haven't you seen. excuse you it's based uncle thank you very much based <laughs> uncle and so you've seen it chinoda bro it's so good I, oh, okay. oh man all right the final few <laughs> weeks of waiting for the last episode the pain yeah oh my so God. this guy oji-san um first of all the main character the, the uncle he he's like he got put into a coma when he was very young he like got into a coma when Sega was still part of the the market, and then like yeah. twenty or something years later, he comes back. He comes he was out like of his a coma, eighties baby, something like that. Yeah. So then he comes back into um the modern world, yeah. into the modern world. But the thing is, his mind was transported to another world. So he explored into another world, but his main body was here. But he he did age, so he's like a nineteen year old in a thirty something year old's body or something like that. No, no, um, no. He, no, he did was like age 16. in the other world as well, but yeah. But um, <laughs> he's voiced by Dio. <laughs> yeah, that's the most <laughs> fucking sold. I'm going to go watch it right now. <laughs> but See, it, it's you're going to weird... because of that, but it's actually really fucking good. It's, like, it's I a weird on my isekai. Shit, because... man, that's all you had to say. He was voiced by Dio. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm saying it's a weird isekai because it's like technically he his body that we follow, he's never left the real world. But his mind has. And he has... It, he gains magic and stuff. And he brings it back to the old world. So he, a lot of our viewing of the other world is like through his memory magic. It's like, oh yeah. And it's like, wait, if you were knocked out, uncle, how did this happen? And he's like, oh, don't worry. The spirits were recording. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's not a serious isekai. It's super stupid and funny, but the essentialness is that he goes to this other world and this dude he went there without knowing the existence of Sundarians weren't created yet when he got isekai <laughs> So, like, there's this Whoa. obvious love interest who's a Sundare, right? Elf girl. And he doesn't know what a Sundare is. So he's like, oh, she hated my guts. <laughs> like, like, the anime oh. very painfully made it obvious that she loved him. And... Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> It's so it is a, it's a not serious watch. It's fucking hilarious. Um, to me, like I I don't know if it's a satirical isekai anime. It, I don't it kind think of it's plays, satirical. It, it kind of plays off as like a satirical one, but it does. It's not a self aware making fun of. Like it's more like Konosuba mm -hmm. in terms of its comedy mm -hmm. uh, of like, hey, look at these funny isekai tropes because he he basically he goes to the other world and like he's considered ugly, so they think he's an orc. Yeah, <laughs> and, he is like considered horrible like anytime someone sees him they're like oh my god it's an orc kill him i yeah. haven't seen this but this sounds awesome it's great i yeah, talked and, about um, it while it was airing you never gave it a chance motherfucker hey. i probably should have said that dio was, you just said dio was in it man yeah really again chinoda not leading with the important bits here <laughs> what else is new like what guys this is actually new? really great go watch it no no so I, uh, for Isekai Oji-san, I read it before I watched it, and I, re I remember during the production, it was unfortunately published by Netflix, so uh, it got basically no promotion, uh, and also, I believe there was a bunch of COVID outbreaks and stuff during the production, so they had I to delay a bunch this. of Netflix. It kept That's delayed. why it got so delayed, and yeah, so it, it's it like actually the hype... ended up stretching over multiple yeah, so seasons. Because unfortunately, the hype for o Isekai Oji-san was like basically at an all-time low because of like netflix is fucking scheduled the de production delays so un you know like i want everyone else out there to at least give isekai oji-san a shot like watch just watch the first episode bro it if you don't like it if you don't like the first episode you probably wouldn't like the series because the first episode basically is every episode is going to be basically kind of centered around the same type of topic of like i how would say the, the first format. two episodes more so you need to i feel like it comes in a package pair for you to get more of a full experience yeah I, i'm like i just don't think people have ever heard of this like i, I don't even i don't see people re-uploading clips of it and stuff that much i've seen it actually i've seen it a couple times so like there I've are seen definitely it, but not it, as it's much more as, of like, a cult you know, following with us yeah it's it's most definitely a cult following but i think more people should watch isekai ochi san it's fucking phenomenal john as an anime adaptation from netflix it cannot be as bad as way of the house husband Oh god! That no, was no, god. nothing ever will be. What? Nothing ever and be. I have actually gone and read some of Way of the House Husband. It's oh. really, it's funny. It's enjoyable. I love Way of the House Husband's manga. It's hilarious. And the anime gets none of that right. <laughs> I, I, it's surprising too. It's animated just. It's, it's, they were just painted pages from the manga. 
literally put onto the screen as a slideshow. Painpeco.jpg. So, <laughs> exactly. I haven't I'm seen like, Isekai how, Ojisan. How I don't have you... a, a dog in the hunt here. How, how could you make an adaptation where if you're literally lifting the manga, which is phenomenal, and then pasting it with color, how did you make it worse? How is that know. possible, Netflix? I don't know. But they managed to. Where are you yeah. putting Isekai Ojisan, though? Mm, I, I it's definitely a tier i would A-tier, say a yeah. tier okay. like it is great it's close I, to s tier honestly yeah I like i really to, would say that i have nothing to say for or against it i haven't seen it like i said i don't have a, a dog in this hunt so i definitely the ice princess <laughs> I, just Mabel? Thought of her. Mabel? I just thought of the ice princess yeah <laughs> There's All so right. many great characters. Genuinely, please go watch I, this. Give it a chance. I will probably watch it then. Maybe in time for the next monthly dump. Who knows? Uh, All right. Now something these two hate. <laughs> excuse me. I like ReZero. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think I'm the only person in the Subaru. world who hates ReZero, man. I feel like I'm the only person who hates ReZero. All right, D-tier. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you no, even I'm cosplayed Super and you're putting it in D- I what have the- cosplayed Super. <laughs> I don't know. I just I, I can't bring myself to hate ReZero. I I'm I'm far from saying I love it or that it's like a, an S tier isekai. It's not. I don't and think especially it's since there's there's such a gap in between each of these seasons that are coming out. And it's like I get it, it takes time to make quality animation, but come on, you can't have three or four years in between each of your seasons. Okay, that's that's a whole nother complaint. Um, going off the anime, it's a very itself, valid complaint. It is a valid complaint, and that's fair. You've been kept waiting. The only compliment uh, I can give ReZero is that it's got good music. <laughs> <laughs> it does have great music. I mean, yeah, John, yeah. you mean you mean you like hearing every three episodes? Ah. <laughs> I love that sound effect, actually. Yeah, because <laughs> every time I hear it, I'm just like something bad happens. Like, ah. I was like, oh no, oh no. John needs a soundboard on his phone that he can just walk around with in real life. No, he would have too much power. And he every would time someone shot. comes, you know, every time someone comes to him at work and says, "I lost a tool," he could just play that sound effect. Uh. Hopefully, he's not on a plane. <laughs> hey, I shipped, yeah. I shipped this plane, and the bolts weren't tight. Uh. No, no, no! Don't talk about, don't talk about that. Yeah, I think that ReZero, uh, the, the animation was good. The uh, music is great. I think the story is ass. <laughs> Even the source material, the story is ass. So <laughs> I will, <laughs> what I, am I supposed I to do with the, this information? I think that the light novel is not very well written. Um, but I do think the anime does it better. <laughs> because it cuts out some of the fat. Since I've only As... read the first two volumes and watched the first season, I have no horse in this race. Like you're, because we're doing a comparative of all of all of ReZero. So mm-hmm. this yeah. is the right. Re- the rest is up to you guys. Like I, I know that the world just absolutely loves ReZero for whatever reason. So to me, I think it's solid D tier. <laughs> I know you guys are gonna rank it at D tier. Fuck, I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna rank it at B or A tier. To be honest. I think you guys are going to give it accolades, just in, like the rest of the world. In compared, well, we're putting it in S. <laughs> I'm yeah, no, we're no, not I putting it in God. S. We're not. Um, as as much as I know, Natai absolutely adores it, and I, I really wish he were here to talk about it. But it has a lot of problems. Uh, it's it's not perfect, and I'd say if I had to give it a ranking, especially based on the uh, you know compared to what we have here, I'd say B tier. So before we give it a ranking, I do want to say, um, I don't think the story is god-awful like John thinks. I do think there is a lot of content to it, and it is a little bit overwhelming at times. The pacing could be better, but I don't think it's the worst thing ever. They do structure it in a way that it makes sense for me. Um... The characters are cool and engaging, and getting to see uh, backstories for a lot of them, especially later on, which makes things connect a lot more and gives it a uh, re uh, the ability to rewatch it to make it a to give it a different perspective. I find is really cool because once you've seen something later, 
and you go back and watch something, you can connect certain dots that weren't there before. And you're like, oh, holy shit. I find that to be really cool, really interesting. Um, It's not the greatest thing ever, but it's not horrible either. I think this belongs in B tier. Okay. That was a long-winded uh, way to say, I agree with you, Alex. <laughs> well, excuse me if I want to actually talk for once and give some feedback and detail. Fuck, you know yeah. what? I will never say anything <laughs> Yeah, especially since Fuck I can't you. comment on it. you. I actually put in effort for something for once. All right. And now for me to completely dunk on your entire theory. Subaru is basically Adam Sandler. All right? He's got a heart of gold, and he's a go happy-go-lucky guy, and things just happen to work out for him, even though it shouldn't work out for him. Just saying. Just just putting it out there. I never thought about it that way, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I disagree with that. I think he actually puts an effort to... No, he actually he does. Yeah, that's the entire point. It's like it's supposed to be him always trying to put a foot forward and then taking getting pushed back two or three steps and then unlocking uh, more lore behind the world. And I'm like, mm. okay. Do you know, so he when gets does it push back like five or ten steps each time? And he has yeah, to fight one bitterly. step forward, 18 steps back. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's my, just the suffering of Subaru. See, and that's that's my biggest it is issue. Suffer porn. That's my biggest issue with the story. Not the fact that like I, I don't mind seeing characters suffer, especially if there's some kind of like uh, something that they can learn along the way from it. Sometimes ReZero feels like it's suffer porn for the sake of being suffer porn, and yes. honestly, I do feel that's a valid complaint. Well, I don't I, care about that, but I understand a lot of people do, and it's, well, it is a valid complaint. I was going to compare it to something like Mishoku Tensei, for example, where Rudy suffers from time to time, but it always serves the plot and it always serves to like it serves his growth as a character in ReZero. It's like, OK, you have this time loop mechanic, which is cool and all. But number one, we still don't know how it works. We still don't know who's in control of it, at least in the anime. I'm not talking about the, the source material. Um and, like, there doesn't seem to be any, like, logical rhyme or reason to it. And every time he suffers, it's just like, okay, we got to go back, you know, however many days or hours or whatever it is in the past, and we got to do all this shit over again. And it's like, okay, that's great. The first two or three times you do it, and now it's like it's becoming old. Yeah. And, but... and Subaru isn't growing that fast either. It's like Subaru is still the same dumbass that he is in se at the end of Season 2 that he is at the beginning of Season 1. Yeah, because the story is not about his personal growth. <laughs> the story is about him dying. I That's will say, he does experience Why do you exist, Subaru, growth, to though? die? <laughs> like, it is at a slow pace, but he does experience personal growth. It's very, it's it's like snail -like It is slow. Pace. It is almost painfully slow. You know how times. I know he doesn't experience personal growth? Because even in the spinoff with Rem, where he escapes with her, he still chooses Amelia. Yeah. What? <laughs> John, Not anime no. only. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, oh, this guy doesn't even read any of the side stories. This guy. Fake fan. Fake, Fake fan. Fake fan. <laughs> I'm I I am in agreement that I, I say we put it in B compared to everything else. Like I, I'm I'm very far away from loving it, but I can't say I absolutely hate it because there are elements to it I do like. All right. All right. Last final is, thing. It was, was gonna be one of be one of one of John's honorable mentions. <laughs> It was actually on my list. It's Inuyasha. I love Inuyasha. I, Me I too. think I, I love a lot of the music. And you know, it's like, could this just be a uh, nostalgia bias? It could be. Maybe. Because Inuyasha, it, it is old, it is dated. Uh I definitely don't think it's like S tier levels of anime. Quick no. question. Are we counting the uh all the movies? The sequel series. Oh, uh oh. The no, I'm, ta I'm talking about just or whatever, Inuyasha, Inuyasha and the Inuyasha movies. No, I'm not. I'm not including the uh, the sequel. Okay, so just the original series. Yes, yes. the original series, because that, that spans like sixty something episodes. Yes, still haven't watched it. <laughs> what I haven't? Yeah, it's, I've it's, only it's, seen I... a couple episodes on Toonami way back in the day. So I meant to get around to watching it. I just haven't. Uh, it might just be again nostalgia bias but i think inuyasha is a pretty darn good just show in general yeah like, i do agree with that. uh it it introduced a lot of people to be to be anime fans like if my wife was here she'd be talking about i love inuyasha <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was a lot of people's first anime 
No, I and... I remember. I mean, this this the anime started airing in the near the end of the year two thousand, um, and I remember staying up late to watch this anime on TV because they were airing it there. Um, I don't know. It's not the it's not the anime that got me into anime, but it's one of the anime like in that late nineties, early two thousands era that really solidified my love for for anime. Like this, along with stuff like Cowboy Bebop, um, Naruto uh anime like that um, yeah i and you know i i recently not recently i guess like 10 years ago i also rewatched all of inuyasha uh one more time after i watched all of it one more time because i watched it like you know as a kid you don't really you're not certain if you've watched every single episode because you just watch it when you can so then i remember my friend she gave me her dvd collection of inuyasha when i was in high school i believe and i watched all of it then and then a couple of years ago, I went and rewatched it again. So I, I, I don't know if, again, it's because of nostalgia bias, but I didn't mind watching it again. Uh, there are some dated jokes in there. Um, very dated. Uh, very dated jokes. Again, it's, it's based off of a manga. Is it based off of? Yeah, it is based off yes, of a manga. Yes, right? it is based off of a manga written um, in the late 90s. 80s, early 90s. Yeah, it was like a 90s manga. Very 1996 is when it started publishing. Time. Yeah, so again, very dated. <laughs> It's got some dated. Not jokes that in it's there. the worst thing ever, but a couple of off the cuff jokes. Well, I mean, there's literally a perverted monk who like sexually harasses. Then no, he touches her butt, sexually assaults um one of the girls, like literally every other episode. Yeah, like that's the joke is that he's perverted, but he's a monk. It's ha ha ha. Ha, ha, ha. He, like, I mean, it's all it, cheeks. It, it's it's done by the same uh, the well the the manga is written by the same mangaka that wrote Urusei Yatsura. Yeah, so I, I think that the quality of the story and stuff is still pretty solid. To me, it's a solid B tier anime. Like I, I think that I haven't watched the the remi- or the sequel. You know where everything happens afterwards, so I have yeah. no clue if the literally if the, the still only good. joke that I actually found to be funny from that is who the fuck fucked Shashamaru? Who wouldn't? I know who. I know what happened, and I have a problem with it. But that's that's for another thing. <laughs> But uh, I'm anyway, just saying, I am all I, for doing a spoiler that, cast of Inuyasha. <laughs> I don't think anyone cares about a spoiler cast for Inuyasha. I think the I, Inuyasha fans were made back in the 90s, and we're not making any more Inuyasha fans. But I have heard that the sequel is bad. Like, the it's sequel not is just all right. Oh, I, I heard okay. it's not up to par to the original. So. No, it's not. Nowhere near. But, yeah, to me, I, I think Inuyasha is a solid B. Just because of the story is still pretty decent. Like I love the romance between uh, Inuyasha and Kagome first and foremost. Sit like, boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember the English voice casting is pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. You, for, for ba- yeah back for in the anime... day, the dubs were not that great. But I remember what few episodes I did watch it. I'm like, yo, this is actually really cool. For an anime from like the early 2000s with the sort of all over the place quality of dubs at that time, this is a pretty good dub. I think the person who voiced Kagome is also the person who voiced Misty. Was it? I don't know. I haven't looked it up, but I, I feel like they had the same voice. Hold on. I got I got to see this. And if I... so, then she, she might just be the secret behind my childhood crushes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just her voice. <laughs> I got I'm looking this up right now. Uh no. Um no? I, I mean if it was, then not listed on Mal. Yeah, I um, don't know. The only other, uh, well, character that I think a lot of people would know her from is she did voice a character in Dragon Ball Z, but not a main character. Wait, who did she voice? Uh, Vital or Vital or however the hell you pronounce her name. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> that's uh gohan's uh what's it called girlfriend eventual wife um gohan yeah hey he knows way more about dragon ball than i do is I that what her name was him. yeah mr is satan's how- daughter oh yeah mr satan <laughs> freaking uh hulk hogan himself um 
yeah, I I'm kind of in the same vein as you, John. Like I, I'm thinking B. Like realistically, I want to give it like an A as like an A minus because like it was one of those anime that got me like really hooked on anime, and I feel like that may be right. driving I, I a bias a like, little bit. Yeah. But, you know, I'm just saying from the quality of the animation, like it's not anything show stopping. You know, <laughs> you got to understand this came I think out it during was Bebop. good for its day. This came out during Bebop, that. bro. Bebop set the bar. OK, it oh, did, 100, 100 percent. It's a very different anime than Bebop, though. Look at Trigun. Trigun came out during the same time as well. And it's way better as an animated series. I yeah. still like, think it was for for back in its day. It was for pretty its good quality, for what it was. It's OK, that's what I'm saying. That's why I feel like it's yeah. more of a B than an A. Because okay. I have to, like, the music was great. The phenomenal. I love the openings and ending songs. Uh, Every Heart by Boa, amazing mm-hmm. song. I love Boa. Even the OST was actually OST is not pretty bad. decent. Yeah. The movies were really good. Uh, the animation quality, but I mean, you know, that's how it normally it is for a lot of, uh, at least back in the day for anime series. If they got movies like OVAs and stuff, there was more quality and effort yeah. put into those because it sells, you know, because it's got to sell a, a one DVD box <laughs> versus yeah. having a set. You know, people find it more hard pressed to be spending. 20 40 bucks for a dvd than um they would for a whole like season of a show yeah um this is also when sunrise as a studio was kind of at their peak <laughs> are you saying sunrise the netsu is not at its peak right now <laughs> <laughs> well we'll have to wait and see what happens when the new akira series drops john is there a new one what yeah they're bro, working there on is. a they're working on a full adaptation of the akira manga yes Oh, so we'll finally get the second half of the story. Yes, which is where the story really goes balls of the wall. As long as they keep the iconic slide, I don't really care about anything else. <laughs> uh, I want I want them to bring back the original voice actors for the English. Kaneda! Akira! And also, <laughs> and also, to answer your question, John, no, I don't think they've been on their uh, A game since Love Live came out, so fuck you. <laughs> I don't know, bro. They've been really successful with Love Life. <laughs> I'm just saying Love Life came out and the studio went straight down the toilet. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> what a hater. I Even hate I don't Love hate Love so Life that fucking much. much. Ranking the Yasha B. Let's get over. Let's get this over. All right. With. All right. I, I'll, I'll do it. But I'll, I'll say it's a high B. B plus. All right. All right, that's it. That's the. Oh, the... hold on a moment. No, they made um Iron Blooded Orphans. Fuck off. They were okay. covered. Okay. Yeah, even, Sunrise even... made Gundam, bro. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, listen. Even even people in the worst slumps of their life have oh moments God. of greatness. Oh my God, this guy's just a hater. All right, we're done. We're done. You know what I'm saying is, love life heart. sucks, and if you like it, you should hate yourself. <laughs> yeah, I don't condone that. But you know what breaks my heart? My favorite uh, series on this list is the lowest ranked. It hurts. CDL <laughs> Overlord. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised, good. I, I'm surprised that nothing got the wrath of the D tier this time. Because what we picked wasn't complete utter garbage. <laughs> it, it, it's the worst because this is like, this is what we consider peak isekai anime. And it's like, oh. I'm going to do like, a reverse list of uh, ranking the worst. Uh... No, honorable, honorable D tier isekai smartphone. <laughs> no, not even honorable, bro. That's dishonorable, dishonorable mention. Dishonorable, dishonorable mention. mention. That's dishonorable. rank E right there. It's rank F, bro. We're too straight past E. We no, F and rank, rank Z. Rank Z. No, that sounds cool. Rank no, F. Z is cool. Rank Z is cool. <laughs> okay. It just reminds me of when people were asking Pecker about her cup size, and she just goes, Z cup. <laughs> anyway, let's put us back here. So that's our that's gonna be our list of uh our top five isekai ranked. Uh let us know down below what you thought of our rankings and how shit they were, because I'm sure you will all have wonderful opinions about that. Yeah. Um uh, how dare we rank um anything lower than S tier of your favorite show? <laughs> we're so sorry. Yep. Yeah, we're, we're we're so sorry about that. We're we're so 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 sorry. <laughs> we were paid by by Anime Studios to rank them. <laughs> we weren't. I was paid. I was was paid by Sunrise to tank this entire list. I don't know what you were talking about. The refs were paying me under the under the table there. Um, but no. Um, 
also um check down below oh uh like comment subscribe uh if you like what you saw and you do want to see more it really really does help us out also don't forget to check down below where you can find links to anime club after dark on uh twitter tiktok discord uh we're on blue sky now all that good stuff we also have a merch store link down below where you can get things like this brand new uh collared acad shirt that i'm wearing wow it's very so nice professional. represent yeah i wanted a new collared shirt and i thought well i can make one on our merch store and have our logo on it <laughs> and so i did and now you can all have one too and it comes in like four or five different colors you can get it in including black um but anyway with that i have been your host alex and we will see you next time say goodnight guys bye watch isekai og son really good <laughs> seriously dude i like we, it's up to the fans of the series to promote it because no one else is going to fucking promote I it. I need a season Netflix. two so bad. <laughs> Netflix sure won't. <laughs> God, why does everything Netflix touches dies? Yeah, I know, <laughs> bro. I know. And we're out. <laughs>